Okay, and now let's put two and two together. Effectively, we know how we can work with multiple returns. And the reason why we want to use them with fetch data, because essentially you'll have three states. You'll have the loading one, when we are waiting for data arrive. Because keep in mind, when it comes to fetching data, it's asynchronous. So it doesn't happen instantly. Then second, there might be an error. So I don't know, maybe the values were not correctly provided. Maybe the network doesn't work. I mean, whatever, there could be all kinds of errors. And then the last one is the success. And essentially we go through those states. Those are our options. And therefore in the state, we actually want to set up two more Booleans for loading and for error. And then depending on the values, we want to display more JSX. So let's start working on that where first I want to navigate back to the component and let's set up those state values. Again, the convention is to go with is and then the name. Technically, you don't have to. So if I'm going to go here with is loading and then set is loading. And you know what, by default, I'm going to set it equal to true. And then I'll do the same thing with error. Now this one by default will be false. So let's set it back to false. And then as far as these values, let's go error. And we want to also change it over here. Let's save it. And then let's keep on moving. Before we set the user, why don't we set up two conditions? So one is going to be for loading and one if we have an error. Now, please, placement here is important. So if you'll place the loading after the actual JSX you want to return, then it's not going to make sense because loading is going to be first and JavaScript effectively reads everything top to bottom. So if you'll have return before the loading condition, then essentially you'll all the time display the JSX and that's not what we want. So make sure that you set the loading first. So the whole point of this rant is that the placement is extremely important. And then let's go here with the return and we want to provide whatever value. So in my case, it's going to be again, the heading two with loading and dot, dot, dot. And now let's do the same thing with an error. Now keep in mind, since this is true, we'll right away hit this condition. So this is what we'll return and error basically is going to be displayed only when we set this one to false. So we bypass that condition and this one to true. Again, something very important to keep in mind. And I keep getting these questions all the time in course Q&A. That's why I'm spending more time on that. So let's go over here with loading. And instead of that, we'll just go with there was an error. Let's save this. And for now, we'll right away have the loading. Why? Well, because this is equal to true. Then let's navigate back to our fetch user and let's go through the logic. So we start over here fetching, we display loading. Okay, everything is awesome. Now, what do we want to do when we get back to user? Well, we want to set our state value, right? That kind of makes sense. So let's go over here. Let's go with set user. And now this one is equal to a user. Okay, beautiful. And then right after these conditions, the try and catch, we want to essentially set loading to false because we're done loading. So at that point, we have only two options. Either there was an error, we didn't get the data, or if everything was successful, then of course we want to display the user. Again, it starts with loading. Loading is true. And then once we're done with loading, then we only have two options. And that's why right after the catch, I want to go with set is loading and we'll set it equal to false. Now let's move up here and let's take a look at the error. So if something goes wrong, basically this should get triggered, right? But again, the gotcha with fetch that it's not going to do it. If let's say the resource doesn't exist, let's say 404. And this is something that we'll cover in following videos. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I'm just going to say that, yes, we'll set here 
set is error and we'll set it equal to true but you'll see that it doesn't work with all the errors again with axios yes this is going to be the case this will be always in the catch but not with the fetch something important to keep in mind so now notice first we're loading and then we have fetch data now the loading one is going to be very quick by the way because again we're working locally on all that so of course it's going to happen instantly once we set up the return yes i'll navigate to a bigger browser and i'll slow down the network just so you can see that it's definitely there so once i have the user in my state what we can do well we can navigate down here and essentially return something display the user we were actually fetching and here i'm gonna go with div i'm gonna set up first the image and this is the case where i said that basically i want to go with inline styles just because i know that it's going to be massive and i don't want to spend my time in the css so this is a good use case in my opinion for the inline ones that's why i'll go here with width 150 pixels and i'm going to add a little bit of border radius here so as you can see i actually have the error make sure that you have proper javascript syntax basically we need a comma over here and we're going to set it equal to i don't know 25 pixels now at the moment we don't see anything because of course we need to provide those values and essentially for the image i want to go again with that avatar i believe yep so we go here with user and avatar now keep in mind the reason why we'll have to go with user dot user dot user dot is because now we have an object so this essentially is the object that's in our state so i have a user object and now in order to access those properties, we either can destructure it, something we'll do later, because there's one gotcha I wanna show you, or we can go with the object, which in my case is user, and then the property. Again, the avatar should be somewhere over here. It's probably first one, yep, notice over here, that's the avatar. Then as far as the alternative, I'll provide the name here. So let's go here with user, and then avatar underscore URL. As far as the alternative, we're going to go with user and then name. And then we just want to provide, again, name in heading to company and a bio. So we have an image. Then we want to go over here with user and then name. And then after the name, we're going to go with heading four works at. Then again, let's grab the curlies. We'll go with user and then company. And then at the very end, we have the paragraph with basically a bio. So user and then bio. Let's save this and check it out. Now we have nicely fetched a GitHub user. So now let me just grab this URL and let me set it up on a bigger browser window just so you can see how basically everything works. So let me open this one up in new tab, copy and paste, everything's awesome. And essentially, let me slow down the network. And we can do that if we navigate to the DevTools, we're looking for the network one. And notice over here, I'm actually using fast 3G. That's why I was wondering why it took so long in the use effect example, so well. So actually, I was all the time using that. Never mind. And notice, basically, if we go with regular, it's going to load right away. However, if I'm going to change it to, let's say, fast 3G, you'll notice that first we'll get the loading. That's going to be displayed on the screen. So we'll have loading dot, 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 dot. And then we basically get the user. So that's our setup. And up next, let's talk about the fetch errors.